I'll teach you how to use filters, comparisons and segments in Google Analytics 4. I included all of them in this same video because at the end of the day, they kind of do the same thing. But as usual, Google has made it way too confusing to use them. <laughs> Hello data people, I'm Robert from Clicks.ly and I'm here to help you understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. So let's head to GA4 dashboard. So let's start with the most used filter, I would say. So if you scroll down, you actually have this inline filter and you can filter what you see here. So for example, if I just look for email, it'll filter by email and then I could come here and just search for campaigns, for example, and then it will add that as a secondary dimension and I can see uh, everything for email. So quite handy and quick. And the other one that appears also on all the re default reports is the add filter here. So if you click on it, uh, it opens up this menu and here you can choose the dimension. So let's say I want to just look at device category. Let's say in this case, it'll be desktop exactly matches and it's desktop. Now notice that you have also other options here. You have contains, begins, ends, matches, regects. We're going to get, get to this because it's quite useful in some cases. And then you have does not exactly match. So if you want to exclude something, you can do it with these. In this case, I'll keep it simple. And there's a save button here and let's just save it. And now the data you see here is for desktop users. So it's been already filtered. However, with this filtering option, you're not able to save it. So it doesn't remember it. If you go to another one, let's say you go here to landing page report, it's not going to remember it and you have to reset it. So to reset it, obviously you come here and then you add device category and so on. Let me quickly just show you another thing that is a bit restrictive here. So what you can do here is if you add a second filter option, so let's add another one. And let's say we're going to say the landing page has to be a um, certain page. So let's say if you come to our exactly matches and then you have here, let's say this page, I want to only see users that came to this page. Now in this report, obviously it doesn't make sense. It'll just show that page, but let's say that's what we want. Notice how here in filtering, you have only and logic. So it's this and this only that it filters out everybody else. So if you're not on desktop and you, your landing page is not this page, it'll filter you out. Now, in some cases, it would be useful to have or logic here as well, but it's not possible here. The way you can kind of go around it, uh, let's say I remove this one now, you could come here and it says exactly matches. Let's choose matches regex or partial regex. This one is a little bit more forgiving. So you could just say this one uh, and then you type in desktop, then pipe sign. This means or, and we say tablet. And now let's filter this. Now, now the data we see is only for desktop or tablet. That pipe sign just means or, you can see it here. Now, if you want something more permanent that you don't need to set it constantly and it kind of remembers it, uh, let's remove the filter from here. We can uh, set something called comparisons. You can add them from here and you can add them also here, edit comparisons. So let's add it from here. This works quite similar to the filtering. We can create a new one from here. And let's say, again, I just want to look at something simple like country. And if you are from US, then uh, I want you to be included. So you see country exactly matches United States. Now, if you want to add another one here, again, we have the same limitation where we only have and. And here it's harder to go around it because it doesn't have the regex option. So the comparisons are quite limiting. So let's remove this one. Just want to mention. And if we save this one now, we need to give it a name. Let's say I'll just change it like this country equals United States, confirm, and then now it's going to apply it. You'll notice that it applies it. We see right now all users and also the US users. So here is the line. The blue one is all users. And in the table, you can compare the two to each other. Now, all users in, in the country US doesn't really make sense, but maybe you could compare Canada with the United States or UK with the United States. Then it's a little bit more interesting. And if you don't want to see all users, just delete it. And then you'll have your comparison only here. The cool thing is, Again, if we go to another report, it will follow us along, kind of. Again, you'll have to enable it from here and maybe delete the all users, but it follows you around, so you don't need to redo it. And also it saves it, so you don't need to recreate it later on. So if you come next day to GA4, it'll still be there. Unfortunately, you cannot share that with anybody. So if you share this, this URL, it's not going to show them with this comparison just because it saves it only in your account and it saves here if you click on the com edit comparisons or just click on this thing add comparison you can see that appears here even if you reload the page or come the next day 
One thing I forgot to mention is in the comparisons, what you can do is you can add audiences. And audiences come from Google Ads, and sometimes it's really useful if you already have audience, you've already collected data, you could look at those people here. But I don't have any audiences, so this uh, this this one is not connected to Google Ads, so it doesn't show anything. But just so you know, you have that option. If you created audiences in Google Ads, it will also show up here if you linked GA4 with Google Ads. And by the way, data is not created equal, and you should be only looking at data that is relevant to your role. That's why I created a cheat sheet, which shows you the most important metrics and KPIs specific to different e-commerce roles. You can download it by clicking on the first link in the video description. So I'm here in explorations, and I wanna quickly show you that you also have filtering here, and here you have something special, which is called segments. We're gonna get to those in a second. Let me remove what I have here. So if you scroll down, you have the basic filterings here. You could come here and say, hey, country, uh, and then select exactly matches. And let's say in this case, it'll be UK, United Kingdom there, UK, and now it will filter that data. Even if it's the funnel exploration, you can still filter your data like that. Now this is quite basic and you can only add uh, another filters here, but they are all with the end logic. So a little bit limiting there. Uh, however, you do have the option to add here regex. So what I've showed you in the beginning, you can add it also here. Let's remove this because I'm gonna show you the most powerful way uh, of segmenting anything here, and that's using segments. So if you come here, you're able to click on the plus and you can create your own new segment. So let's say I wanna just look at session segments. That means uh, it looks at uh, that specific seg session instead of just the user in total or even just the event, one event. So most of the time you'll use one of these two. So let's choose sessions. Let's give this a name. Let's call it test desktop traffic. And now we could provide a short description here and we can just hit, say here, okay, vice category and add a filter. And now we can say, okay, exactly matches and it will be desktop. But notice how here you have and and or. So you can choose which logic you use. For or, I could say, oh, okay, I actually want also the tablets here like that. And now it's with the or logic. You can also add and logic. And this is kind of, I'm not sure why you can separate these, but you could also add the same thing, but it will be with and logic. And then you have add group to exclude. So you could also exclude something. So let's say I don't want to see any users that came on the landing page was homepage. So I could come here, landing, landing page. So I'm going to exclude those that came from there, contains, exactly matches. And I have here my homepage, which is just the forward slash and apply. And now you can see that excludes 18 out of my 316. Now you've noticed that there's no way to actually use your comparisons that you created in your default reports in here. Also, you cannot uh, use audiences here. So it's kind of annoying. However, you can build an audience from here. If you want to know how to build this, you can just, you can just click on the banner here in top right corner and it will take you to a tutorial. But for now, a little bit more advanced. And if we look at this one, we can now save and apply it. So we have desktop traffic. It appears here and I could now add it here and it will filter out everything. Is it, did it add it? Yeah, there you go. Desktop traffic is there. Now, one thing to note, it saves it only for this specific exploration. So if I go to my other exploration, it's not gonna show up there, unfortunately. So you can see, it's a little of these annoying things that GA4 doesn't have yet. So if I go here, I have to recreate that same segment, although it's really clear that I would like to reuse it here. Now you know how to use GA4 filters, but GA4 default reports are full of metrics and dimensions you don't need, and using them will just waste your time. That's why you should watch this video next, where you will learn the most useful reports in GA4 for e-commerce.